Good morning. Uh, we're glad that you're with us this morning. My name is Pastor Steve. This is Grove Church. We're a church centered in North Bergen, New Jersey, but uh, obviously online we have people all over, and we're glad that you're part of our family this morning. We're going to worship God in singing. We're going to have a look at the book of Exodus, learn about uh, the freedom that God brings and what does that mean, and some challenges with that. Also, we have a message for the kids and some uh, questions to process it all together. So thank you so much for joining Grove Church. start our worship gathering with a call to worship, which is a reminder, a wake-up call for us to worship God no matter where we are. And today is based on Exodus chapter 20. In Christ, the God of heaven made his home on earth. Christ dwells among us and is one with us. King of all creation, he lives among the least. He journeys with the rejected and welcomes the weary. Come now, all who thirst, and drink the water of life. Come now all who hunger and be filled with good things. Come now all who seek and be warmed by the fire of love. So we pray that this be an experience where you encounter God and we do it together. As we come before God, we remember in the burning bush that God asked Moses to take off his shoes because it was holy ground. We come realizing that we in some ways have to change our posture we come to confess our sins to God and seek his forgiveness. So I'm going to lead us in this time of prayer and leave some silence for us to prepare our hearts before him. The letter from the Hebrews it urges us to keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so, some people have shown hospitalities to angels without even knowing it. Continue the scripture said, continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and all the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So during this moment of silence, let us together seek God's forgiveness as we confess our sins to God. Let us pray silently. Let us look toward the Psalm, Psalm 103, as we are reminded that even though we have and even though we sin, that God forgives and restores and renews us. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. 
but the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments. Thanks be to God. As God has given us peace to Christ, so a sign of peace of Christ to one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Online in the comment section, show signs of Christ's peace, his welcome, and his greeting. We're so glad you're here. Peace be with you. God bless you. Now will the children gather. We have a special message for them. Hey kids, it's Pastor Steve. I'm back in the Kidman room and uh, I found something. Not in this room, I found I was upstairs and opened a drawer and found a bunch of these. Do you know what this is? Do you know what it's used for? Well, for those of you who are not sure, this is a cassette. So we had this before uh, CDs, and which are way before MP3s or whatever you listen to music on. So Grove Church, before we had uh, our services on YouTube and Facebook, uh, we recorded these on these cassettes. I'm looking here and it says, uh, this is from March 1975. Uh, this might be older than your mom or your dad. Uh, so this is a cassette of a sermon that was preached here at Grove Church in 1975. So uh, what it is, is you see they put this in a cassette player and there's like this magnetic tape and it records. And you can't see anything from it, but it's you hear it and you can hear the voice and the sermon. And it even says some of the music uh, from March 1975. So that's what this is, a cassette. And you put it in a cassette player. Today's scripture, Moses has freed the people from Egypt. They're no longer slaves. And they're on this journey on this desert road far away from where they're going to be. Have you ever been on a long road trip and you're like, are we there yet? And that's what they're saying. But it's been days and days and days. And they're like, we're so hungry. We're going to die. Have you ever said that? Kind of something like that. We're so hungry. Stop at Chick-fil-A. Well, there's no Chick-fil-A here. There's no restaurants here. They can't see anything or anyone. And they're so hungry and they're grumbling and complaining. And then Moses talks to God and God says, you know what? I'm going to give them uh, quail. I guess they can have chicken sandwiches. So uh, quail. And I'm going to give them this bread that's going to come from heaven. And there was this special bread. That came and it was with the when the morning dew evaporated, it was there and it was there every day and they could eat it all the time. And it was called manna, they called it. Manna means what is it? So just like if you looked at this and you're like, what is it? They looked at they looked at their food, their bread, which looked like flakes and stuff, and they're like, What is it? And that's what it was called. So why am I saying this? Sometimes God gives us things that we don't know what it is. We don't know why it is. Sometimes God's gifts are not always what we expect. I'm sure you've had maybe a birthday or something where you got a gift and you're like, a turtleneck? What was it? But God's gifts are always good. Even if we don't understand why or how, God is a good gift giver and he gives us what he need. He gave the Israelites what they need. Bread and meat. He gives you what you need. You might not know what it is or how it fits. You might not even be aware that the good gifts that God is giving you, and you might not even think about it. But God is a good gift giver. And he gives us good gifts. Even if we're not sure what it is or how it works. One day we will. Can I pray for you guys? God, we thank you for these kids, Lord. Lord, that you are a good gift giver. Even if it's not their birthday, Lord, you give them love and family and care and support. You call them your own. We thank you, God, that you're so good, that you give good gifts. Help them, Lord, to know that you are there for them, that you're always with them, and that you give good gifts, and that you hear their prayers. And you hear this prayer, too. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to give our voices and our hearts to God as we sing a song in worship. So stand up. 
I want to hear you. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 18. 
The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way I will test them and see whether they follow my instructions. On the sixth day they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, At twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Each one is to gather as much as he needs. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered as much as he needed. This is the word of the Lord. Last week we were... Uh, looking at the scripture where Moses was uh, approached by God in the burning bush and he was going to liberate God's people. Uh, before uh, what has happened since then, from now uh, Moses was obedient, went there. There were the ten plagues, as you probably have heard at one time or another. And Pharaoh let go God's people uh, and changed his mind as they were uh, being chased and pursued. There was the, uh, the Red Sea and God miraculously opened the Red Sea and God's people crossed. But here we are, they're not yet at the promised land that God told them he was going to bring them to. They're not yet at the place uh, with milk and honey and all God's goodness. They're in the desert. They're somewhere in between the bondage of Egypt and the, and the promised land that is ahead of them. And they're discouraged. These uh, refugees are in a discouraging place. Not yet uh, embracing and seeing the goodness of, that they were walking towards. So they're hungry, they're thirsty, they're in this desert wilderness place. And they're actually looking back to their captivity in Egypt with rose-colored glasses. Thinking about when they were slaves, at least they had food to eat. At least they didn't have to worry about where their next meal was coming from. Pharaoh was bad, but at least he met their basic needs. Here, they're in the wilderness. They don't know when they're going to eat next. But of course, we know that slavery is not as simple as just getting a couple guaranteed meals a day. 
But this tired and hungry crowd are far from their promised destination, far from the land of milk and honey. So eating, even while slavery, sounds pretty good to them since they're practically starving. We hear their groans for familiar foods instead of facing the hunger of the unknown out in the wilderness. Have you ever been in a spot where you look back uh, at positivity at a place in your life that wasn't that positive, a place that wasn't so great, but somehow you look back with that nostalgia and it seems kind of better than it was? Maybe you look back to your life before Christ, before you became a believer, and you're having a tough time now, maybe you're having a tough time in your faith, a tough time in life. You know, things seem so much easier back then when I used to party and just uh, not worry about pleasing God, when I lived in that self-centered season of life. Maybe it was less complicated seeming now that you're uh, in this difficult season of life. Perhaps those years seem uh, easier, more carefree, maybe more exciting than the challenges you face now as someone who is following Christ. And in some ways, it's, we can frame our past in the same way these Israelites did. To think of how great it was to live back in the bondage of sin compared to being on this Christian journey where you have not reached the destination, right? We talk about uh, the intimacy with God, and we talk about the promise of heaven and every tear being wiped away, the new heaven and the new earth, and we're not there. We're somewhere in the middle. We haven't fully inherited the fruits of the kingdom of God, and, and you may be stuck in a wilderness moment when living for God is not all fried quail sandwiches. Following Jesus is beautiful and good and true, but it's not always easy. Maybe you're just looking at the past fondly and wondering, why does God have you today in this challenging season of life? Why are things so difficult? When things may have seemed easier back in your memory. Maybe you're looking at the past and saying, why am I dealing with this today? Not too long ago, I was yearning and, and thinking so beautifully of 2019. Do you remember that time when things were so easy and carefree, when gatherings wasn't so complicated, where hanging out with people uh, was easy to do, when uh, our kids' ministry could go around seamlessly and was growing every year? Before, we had to remember to bring a mask somewhere, or where you wouldn't freak out if your child has a fever or your neighbor has a cough. We can call those the good old, day, good old days. And instead of being content where we are, we can just hope to the future or look back fondly to the past that may have not been that great. But the future is long in coming. When will things get better? When will we be out of these deserts and wildernesses? We can't travel time, but we try to manipulate it all we can. We scroll on social media or binge TV shows to try to make time pass by to avoid the uncomfortness of the present. But at the same time, we don't want to go to bed too early, right? Because once we go to bed, then we have the whole uh, challenges of the next day just awaiting us. We don't want to meet next day's problems, so we stay awake a little longer, not doing anything very fruitful, but avoiding the end of that day and the work that is following on the following day. We're tempted to look back to two years ago or maybe two decades ago to find our happy place, even when we're honest and even if we're to reflect more, those times perhaps may not be as happy as we remember them to be. In this scripture, the Israelites are hungry, they're thirsty, and they're remembering fondly their time in enslavement, when they were mistreated, when they were oppressed and abused. But they knew where their food and water came from. They knew when dinner time was and what would be before them. They preferred the security of knowing where their next, next meal was coming from. Instead of being free in the wilderness and trusting God and not knowing what was next. God delivered them, remember to this point, God delivered them from Egypt led them through the Red Sea with supernatural power. 
But now they're not sure if they can trust God to meet the day's needs. They're not sure they could trust God when their environment seems so out of control. And while we look at this book of Exodus, we could see the supernatural acts of God, of God moving and working and making a way out of no way. But what we see right here is the display of our human nature. Display of people like you and me when things are tough. Perhaps you know people who are in unhealthy relationships because they don't want to risk it to spend their weekends alone. They'd rather be in these dysfunctions than uh, not sure if they'll be alone on Friday night. And they settle and stay in these complicated relationships. Maybe you are in a spiritual place where you have some affinity towards Jesus, you've been encouraged by scripture, but at the same time, you're not sure if you want to make that leap of faith to following Jesus. You're not sure of what the journey and the commitment of living a Christ-centered life is like. It seems scary. It seems uh, lacking the familiar. And you say, maybe I'm just comfortable being where I am. Kind of not fully holding on to Jesus. And I'm comfortable where I'm at instead of the known of the unknown journey of following God. The Israelites knew God. They knew him from a distance as the God of their ancestors, as the God who Moses referred to as the I am, right? I am who I am. They knew that God delivered them uh, with this face off with Pharaoh. They knew that God opened the Red Sea for them to cross. They saw a presence leading them and guiding them in the desert. But when they got hungry, when they got thirsty, when their destination was so far away, they grumbled. They grumbled because they were not sure that their basic needs would ever be met. It showed a lack of trust, a lack of trust in God. They weren't confident that God would show up on the daily basis to meet their needs. They saw God show up in big ways, but were not sure how God would be present in the day-to-day to meet their needs. It is on these journeys that we take where we get to know God. It is in the desert wilderness that we look for God's face daily. When we're stuck in the machine of Egypt, it's hard to know fully what God is like on a day-to-day basis. We have those special prayer requests, but we don't have that daily walk with the Lord. To be sent by God, there's a first step of obedience, to leave where you are and go into the direction that God is calling you to. God's liberation makes that possible, to leave a safe and secure the bondage of where we're at, and embrace the future that God has for us. God frees us from being stuck in the bondage of sin and sends us off with purpose to follow him, to walk in his ways. Did you ever play tag as a kid where there was a base, right? There was that tag where there there was no bases and people were running around like crazy, but then there was the tag you play where there's that home base and there's always that one kid Maybe it was you, who always was on base, who would never leave base, who didn't want to get tagged. So she was always hovering around there, maybe always holding on, or always taking a step forward and then coming back. As we grow up, we realize that there's places that we don't want to leave because we're afraid of leaving the security that we come accustomed to. Even if that security comes with bondage and chains. The good news of the gospel is that God frees us from those systems of oppression to follow him. It's not a journey that looks safe, but it's the journey that is the most fruitful in all eternity. So if you are this morning on a journey of following Jesus, if you're a Christian, a Christ follower, if you're saved, if you're regenerated, take a moment to celebrate, a moment to be grateful that you are no longer in Egypt, that you are no longer captive to sin, you're no longer in bondage, you're no longer living ignorance. You may not be where you want to be in your life. Maybe you're not even where you want to be in your spiritual life and your other uh, arenas of life. You're not, maybe you're not as far along as you hoped you would be. 
You thought you'd be somewhere else besides this desert wilderness place. The place you're in might look far different than the land that you are promised to go to. But no matter where you are, you are no longer under the thumb of Pharaoh. You've been freed. He who is freed in Christ is free indeed. You may not know how God is going to provide or show up today, but take some time to worship God, to celebrate all that it took to get you this far. Maybe your uh, family life was messed up growing up as a kid. Maybe your view on scripture, the gospel, was kind of short-sighted. Maybe you didn't really fully know God as you thought you did till later. Perhaps you were just living for yourself or immature. But you have grown by the grace of God. You are not at your final destination, but thank God you're free from some of those pitfalls of the past. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a pilgrimage. And it's on this journey that you learn to trust God for his daily bread. It is while being obedient that we learn about God's faithfulness. It's during the times of the wilderness where we grow. Romans 5 reminds us that that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Right? This is about the journey. This is about being in the place where you see God move and work where sometimes there is suffering. Sometimes there is hardship. Those are things that we cannot learn and grow on our own. We can't appreciate the growth that God is doing in these hard, challenging, wilderness times until we take up our cross and follow him. It is when we're hungry in the wilderness that we realize that God gives us daily bread. Friends, you are not in the promised land. You are not in the place of milk and honey. But hopefully, by the grace of God, you are no longer stuck in the place of bondage. You are no longer stuck in Egypt. God has sent us on this wilderness road. On this road where sometimes things are hard, right? It's it's been a hard 18 months. It's been a difficult season. But by the grace of God, we are further than we've been. God is bringing about fruits and goodness and character through these hard times. God has sent us on this desert road where he will provide meat in the desert and bread to rain from heaven. Let's not look back. Don't turn your hearts to the deceiving allure of Egypt, to the good old days that were honestly not that good. When we follow the call of God, we can be assured that the best is yet to come, and that even in the midst of the desert, our needs can be filled, our hope can be refreshed, and our faith can bear fruit. Let us come before this God who brings bread from heaven and let us pray. Not grumble, not groan, but let us come before our Father in heaven and ask as his adopted children. Gracious God, We pray for our friends that are on the wilderness road, that are on the desert, that have vague memories, Lord, of you uh, doing big things in their life, but it seems a long time away. Lord, we pray that you give them strength for the daily journey. We pray for those needs, Lord, that are uh, gnawing at them, Lord, that they may know you, Lord, that you are the one who rain meat, who provide bread, who set a table before our enemies, who leads us to green pastures. 
that guides us to still waters and will one day gather us all up in the promised land. We pray for those who are dealing with hardships and struggles. Pray for those who are sick, who are hurting, who are hungry. Lord, we pray for those people who are afraid of taking their next step with you, Lord, that they may be assured, God, that you are the one who calls, you're the one who sends, and you're the one who answers. May our friends at home know that you're with them, that you're good. And Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for our nation. We pray for our community. We pray that your will and your work may be done in this wilderness time. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping God with us. We hope that you learned something, that you were challenged, that you were inspired. Let us know in the comments or send us a message or email uh, about what has spoken to you and how we can pray for you and partner with you and be part of what God is doing in your life. Uh, one of the ways that uh, people respond, if this is your, your congregation, if this is your church, we'd love it if you uh, worship God by giving to your local church. It uh, helps us to minister to others and continue this ministry. And also, if you give through benevolence, it helps us to partner with our local uh, food pantries and uh, domestic violence shelters and missionaries in Cambodia and New Mexico and uh, on campus ministry. So thank you for giving. Thank you for partnering with us and helping us to be a radically generous church to others. Um, our website is down, but you can go to fourhudsoncounty.com and find ways you can connect on social media and ways you could give uh, right there. Uh, before we have another song of worship, um, I want to let you know that we have some reflection questions as you wrestle and pray yourself together. Receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, now and always. Amen. Say
ascending bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long perfect so and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior